we are back. And so welcome to another episode of I'm in the Car. And I have the honor of having Mike Schreiner in the, in the car with me. So thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, Rob. My pleasure. Um, so, Mike, outside of being uh, an amazing human being, uh, you're also the leader of the Green Party of Ontario. That's right. And uh, that's, that's pretty amazing. So maybe in true... Uh, I'm in a car fashion. Mm -hmm. You could give us a little rundown of how the heck you ended up in this position. Well, thanks. Uh, first of all, thanks for letting me go for a drive with you. Yeah, I'm looking to forward to it. Absolutely, yeah. I don't get to do this very often, so I'm I'm, I'm happy. Awesome. Uh, how I got in this position? You know, I'm a longtime entrepreneur. Uh, started two businesses uh, right around Guelph area. One of the first local organic food delivery companies cool. in Ontario, uh, just just north of Guelph on Cock Creek Farm. And I also ran a food production business out of the kitchen at Ignatius, believe it or not. Awesome. For a number of years. As a matter of fact, at one time we were the largest pie vendor to Whole Foods Markets, believe it or not. Uh, so Ignatius it was is a cool. beautiful spot. Too. Beautiful spot. Oh, I, like, I would love to work there. And then yeah. I'd like go out and the, I, I don't think they still have the swimming pool going. The swimming pool, the apple orchard, which was there at the yeah, time, awesome. and the farm and the trails. It was an amazing place to work. I love Ignatius. So um, I was doing all of that, and I decided that I wanted to ramp things up in terms of just promoting Ontario food and farmers, sustainable agriculture. So I started a nonprofit organization with a colleague of mine, Lori Stalbrand, called Local Food Plus. And we were doing all kinds of amazing work of getting local food into public institutions, restaurants, awesome. retail stores, uh, and doing a lot of public policy work. And as I was doing that work, I had all kinds of people trying to come to me going like, you should be involved in politics. <laughs> and I'd always been interested in politics and was very active. Like I was elected student body president when I was younger yeah, okay, in cool. high school and university and all of that. And was really involved in politics and sort of became disillusioned with politics in general. Right. And so when people started saying, like, you should get involved in politics again, it was just like, now oh, the Green Party was just like my natural home. Cool. Because I thought, where where else can an entrepreneur who believes in the power of business to do good, right? Uh, but also... You know, things we need to be addressing issues like the climate crisis, inequality, and things like that. Where do you have a political home? And I didn't feel like any of the big three parties really reflected my values. And so yeah. the Green Party, I felt, was a perfect opportunity to get involved with politics and do politics differently. Cool. And so, you know, and I also have kids, and my kids were sort of saying things like, Dad, why do you, like, you know, why are you complaining about politics? Why don't you actually do something about it? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So that always helps. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I thought, so I, so I uh, said, hey, I'll run, but I got talked into running in a by-election, which I did, and right. I got third place, yeah. which wasn't bad, sure. you know, yeah, I, um, and after that, the leader of the party at the time came up to me and said, like, you should be a leader of the Green Party of Ontario. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I thought about it, talked to my family, and decided to do it. And, you know, I've sort of jumped in with both feet. And at that time, being the leader of the Green Party of Ontario was, you know, like a quarter-time job for somebody. But right. being the true entrepreneur that I am, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to do this, Head I'm going to do it right. I'm going to, you know, do it full-time. I'm going to turn this into an organ, like a real organization and awesome. a real political force. And I feel like done that and um, I'm very proud of what we've accomplished and now we're ready to take the next step and start electing green MPPs. <laughs> yeah, That's absolutely. Sweet. Get them in the house. Uh, okay, cool. So, thank you for that. That was awesome. Um, you know, it's amazing how many people don't take that much history and make it so succinct. That was really, really good That's intro. part of politics. That was a really <laughs> you good... Gotta, you gotta speak in short sentences. That eh? was a really good <laughs> intro. Uh, so, when... I knew this was coming up and... and I was thinking to myself, you know, well, what are the what's the conversation kind of going to kind of be around? And and this idea dawned on me that I thought would be cool to maybe dig into for a minute. And and it's all around leadership. And if you've seen some of these, a lot of these things are about right. leadership. Um, and 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 hearing about that entrepreneurial background, mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm really interested to, to hear like, you know, there's so many levels of leadership when you're especially when you're in a, um, a leadership position within a, a political party. So like you got yourself, that's right, and then you've got your team, mm -hmm. then you've got your party. And then mm -hmm. you've got your constituency. Right. And wow, that goes from one to a lot. Absolutely. 130,000 so, people in Guelph, eh? <laughs> yeah, right? So, like, how how do you approach that? And, and what do you do to kind of navigate, you know, leadership through all sure. of those layers? Yeah, that's a great question. So, I think first and foremost for me, leadership's about service. Like, I, as a leader, I'm here to serve, you know, my community, uh, my province, my country, uh, my party, like my constituency, my, you know, so for me, it's all about service. And then uh, on top of that, it's about vision and values. And so I think it's been that way, whether I was, you know, leading 
my own company, whether it was being a leader in the nonprofit sector and now being a leader in politics. It's really about service, vision, and values. And I think one of the things that really sort of disappoints me about politics right now is that politics seems to be driven more by personal ambition and self-interest hmm. and less about service to community. And so I think first and foremost, it needs to be about service to community. Awesome. And um, I mean, one of the things I'm, I'm really proud, I'm a member of the Rotary Club of Guelph. And yep. You know, some people, most people probably know Rotary is about service above self. Service above self. And that is something I deeply, deeply believe in. Cool. And, and I think that a sign of a really good leader is somebody who's going to put service above self. And so what is it about that mentality, that process, that approach that makes it so important to you? Yeah, well, if you want to, like, you have to have a purpose for being a leader as far as I'm concerned. And, and that's where the servant ethic comes in. Like if your desire to be a leader is your own ego or your own personal ambition I want, I want the CEO seat or the title like or... to me it's like what's the purpose like I like it, seriously like so when I started my business as an example my vision was I want to change the food system I want to make the food system more profitable for farmers I want to make the food system more sustainable environmentally and I want to make the food system healthier for people who eat right and so for me that was the service ethic I was bringing to starting my local food business and the kind of ethic I brought to uh, my company and it was rooted in my values and my values you know around um, caring for people caring for planet caring for community um, about just being you know having lots of integrity uh, being honest with people like all those sort of values um, then determine the vision I had for where I wanted to take the company. Awesome. And I would say the exact same thing with the nonprofit I ran. And in politics, um, I think especially that applies. And so, you know, I have a vision of where I want to see our community and wealth go, and a vision where I want to see the province go, where I see the country go, where I see the world go, for that matter. Um, but it's all rooted in an ethic of service, and it's all rooted in my own personal values. That's awesome. And it's really interesting to hear. Um, that idea around, you know, there's this change that you wanted to see in the world mm -hmm. and for the betterment of everyone involved. Mm -hmm. And that change is the vision that you then bring to life through an organization of people to pursue the change. Absolutely. Based on the value system. That's which, right. Which is wonderful. And I think, I mean, I'm just going to be a bit of a brown noser, but I don't, okay, sure. I don't know how many people understand how beautifully simple that is. Yes. Um, and, and how that would be. That's a really cool approach to defining vision, starting with what's the change you want to see in the world. And I think that's yeah. why I love working with leaders and entrepreneurs so much. Right. Because they typically see a change they want to make and start yeah. making the change happen. Absolutely. That's why I love working with entrepreneurs too and why I, I, I just believe so deeply in, in the spirit of entrepreneurism. And you know, sometimes people think of entrepreneurs only as business owners. But I have a broader perspective of entrepreneurs. Like I deeply, as a business owner, I deeply yeah, yeah. believe in business entrepreneurs. But you know, there are social enterprise entrepreneurs, there are nonprofit entrepreneurs, there are political entrepreneurs, there are people sure. who really take risk to implement their vision and inspire other people to go take the leap of faith to go with them to accomplish that vision. That's cool. And um, like I found out, you know, running my own business, it was like. How do I inspire my customers to buy into this? How do I inspire my suppliers to buy into this vision? How do I inspire my staff and employees to buy into this vision? Yeah. Um, because I think if you're going to run a great company or a great nonprofit organization or a great political party, you have to be able to inspire people to want to be a part of it and want to be able to put the work into it the, you know, that's required to accomplish great things. Yeah, and, and, it's, and I think it's uh, a couple of things. One is... I think having that clarity of vision really helps attract the right person who's passionate about the idea, Absolutely. but also helps push away people that aren't inspired by it. Oh, for sure. Like, you know, everyone Which has, is good. It's okay. Oh, totally. Everyone has different motivations, right? Yeah, yeah. And so if, like, the vision I have for my party or my company or whatever, my nonprofit, if you don't share that vision, like, go find, go find an organization or a business or a party that, that does inspire you. And right. like get motivated by that. Like it yeah. doesn't have to be just me. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, I think I have a very good vision. Sure. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. Maybe, <laughs> you know? maybe bias. Yeah, a little, a little bit. bias. Or the other that's thing. cool. 
but, but like, you know, so like find that thing you're passionate about. Um, uh, but I think, I think, um, I think in politics in particular right now, people are really looking for something different. Cool. Like, I think they're tired of the status quo. They're tired of the way things have been done. <laughs> you're one of them. Oh, dude, a lot of people are that 100%. way. I think a lot of young people especially are just like, you know, turning off of politics. And so I think we have to have a different ethic and a different motivation and a different reason for doing politics than what currently is on display in, sure. in, in I'll say in, I'll say Queen's Park that's where I'm focused I will yeah. leave, leave other levels of government yeah, to other there. folks leave it there cool so then can you t- can you give us a bit of a uh, an idea of like how the heck do you go from an entrepreneurial move fast get it done mm. go quick into a political environment public sector, wicked transparency, yeah. stereotypical bureaucracy, whether it's yeah. true or not, yeah. how, how does that translate? Yeah, no, no, so it's, um, so in my case, it's been a bit easier uh, being with a small party that doesn't okay, have yeah. a seat in the legislature yet because we're still relatively small and nimble. Right. And it's so like, as an example, when I first took over the party, uh, or took over, that's not the right word, when I first was elected leader of the party, um, <laughs> whoops, uh, <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> Uh, we had a fifty thousand dollar a year budget. You know, right. we brought oh, yeah. that into like a million dollar a year budget. Nice. And so, That's huge. well, it's huge. Oh yeah, and it's all like lots of like thousands of people with small donations, right? Yeah, who believe in our vision and, and believe in our values, and you know want to support the policies we're putting forward. And so, you know, I sort of had the advantage of being a part of an amazing team of people and an amazing group of passionate people to sort of build that. Cool. And so that's a little different than I think poli- people who go into politics with a more established party right. or particularly the governing party. Right. And then it becomes a much bigger challenge and kind because of, of that rigid bureaucracy. And yeah. so I think one of the challenges that politicians of all stripes, I think our society in general faces, is how do we create a culture within bureaucracies that rewards risk taking right. that rewards entrepreneurial thinking and behavior because right now so much of bureaucracy is about just you know do what you have to do you know to cover yourself right, right, right yeah. <laughs> don't get in too much hot water don't don't rock the boat too much yeah. don't and so sometimes people say oh well we want we want government to operate more like business well first of all government is a business and so I don't think it should necessarily operate like business but there are certain practices of business that should happen within government and right. I think one of those is innovation and risk taking but if we're going to do that then we have to um, allow people to fail right Be- yeah. and so that's a huge <laughs> problem in government right so the minute somebody does something wrong or maybe they don't succeed it's like all over the front pages of the paper like they're criticized Dems, they're, they're yeah. condemned they're right and so that's created a whole culture of people who are afraid to take risk and who are afraid to, to innovate in any way. And to and so, dare greatly. And exactly. So to dream big, right? And so that's one of the things we have to, I think we have to do, which is something I love about the nonprofit sector and, and you know, being an entrepreneur in the for-profit sector is that, man, you can take risk. And if you fail, you fail. And, you know, it, it stinks, but at least it's not usually on the front page of the paper, right? Yeah, it, yeah typically never. <laughs> um, and, it, and you learn so much. Absolutely. Like you learn a lot from failure. Oh, yeah, big time. <laughs> We have uh, one of our values at, at Intrigue uh, is action, and the kind of explainer of it is to fail fast and fail forward, embrace failure and learn from it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's amazing how when a, a new team member comes on board, first of all, they don't believe in because right. they're not used to being in a supportive environment yeah. where, where failing's okay. Yep. But once they click and they see that it's a real thing where they actually get kind of rewarded and recognized for failure mm-hmm. and for making a decision and taking a risk and seeing what happens, the speed inside the organization just goes up tremendously. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so for me, oftentimes it's how you respond to failure. So, you know, in my business, when we um, disappointed a customer, uh, we always went above and beyond the call of duty to rectify the situation and satisfy the customer. And most of the time people remember that more than anything. It was like, okay, I'm going to... I'm going to be loyal to this company because of the way they responded to the mistake they made. That's awesome. And so, and I think that applies to business, politics, um, life in general, you know. 
Yeah, well, because we all love when the telecoms make mistakes and then they, they go above and beyond the Call of Duty. And we all yeah, 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 there you right? go. Yeah, yeah. yeah not <laughs> even close. Let's work on that one. <laughs> yeah. They need to work on that one. Uh, so I want to just kind of go back quickly because you, you mentioned this thing in, t- in terms of um, leadership and, and vision and, and then values. Mm. Uh, and, and you referred to integrity. Yes. And now, uh, in my experience, a lot of people have a different take on integrity and what its essence is. So what, what's integrity all about from, from your perspective? Yeah, that's a great question. So again, I think I, this is why I said in so many respects, like first and foremost, leadership is about service. And I think if you have integrity, then you're motivated and driven by serving and not by um, your own personal self-interest. And so to me, where, where people's integrity starts to fall down is when it's all about themselves. Right. Which isn't to say that, you know, that which isn't to say that People shouldn't have like personal ambition and and you know want to succeed and, and all of that sort of but if it's driven by how do I get ahead right and how do I you know screw over somebody else to get ahead yes yeah, then true. that lack of integrity I think will eventually come back to harm you know you personally but also the organization the business the political party whatever that you want to lead so what I what I heard there then in this idea that if somebody has a, a pursuit where they're, you know, quote unquote, screwing somebody over or, or not uh, not doing something with a service mindset for the service of the person they're working with or working for or whatever, then their integrity starts to diminish. And so it, is, it, is it about intention or is it about like follow through or is it about a lack of manipulation like what part of integrity yeah so it's, it's all of those and so I think a big part of it is is like when I was in business or politics or in um, in in the nonprofit sector I always look for win-win situations yeah how can I benefit and advance the agenda I'm hoping to advance and how can you benefit as well and I think it and and, and so sometimes well oftentimes I think in business um you know, the old way of doing things was always kind of a zero-sum game. Right. How does my business beat yeah. your business? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, the art of war. Yeah, right? the art of war, right? And so I think the mindset is starting to shift now of, like, how can our businesses compete with each other but not in a zero-sum fashion? And, you know, I'll give you an example of that. So look at most... Um, you know, when you see car dealerships, yeah. like they're all located around each other yeah, yeah. and they're all competing against each other. But in general, they're just trying to get a buyer to come out Yeah. and you know, they, if they don't want to buy from this dealer, then, you know, they can conveniently walk over to this dealer. Yeah. And in a sense, they're all benefiting, all those dealers are benefiting each other because they're all located together and they're making it convenient for the consumer who wants to purchase a car. Great okay? example. And so, and you can replicate that. I mean, I would assume in the communications industry, you have synergies with other communications companies, marketing companies, and things like that, where maybe they're like, hey, this is what we do really well. And you know what, you, you as a client need this. Yeah. So I may send you over to my competitor even to get the one thing that maybe they do really, really well. 100%. And so that's benefiting my business. And, and, and it's benefiting my competitor's business. And it's been, and it's serving my client. And then at some point, my competitor is going to do the exact same thing for me because you've built up that relationship. It still doesn't mean you're competing against each other for customers and things like that. And so in politics, one of the things that just that infuriates me is you know there are times when political parties disagree and they should disagree. Sure, that's and and there should be a battle of ideas, but there are times when they do agree, and and instead of actually, you know, saying, hey, let's have all the political parties come together and take a united stand on this issue, and let the public know that you know that there's sort of strength and unity, um, that seldom ever happens, <laughs> and and because people are in politics are more interested in. How do we bash the other party to make ourselves look good? Well, that happens all the time. And so a concrete example of that is um, last year, the, the Green Party really led the charge to get big money out of politics. Right. Like, uh, ban corporate union donations, political parties, and lower donation limits just to make our pol- the funding of politics more democratic. Right. And, um, you know, as that legislation uh, 
uh, worked its way through Queens Park. I'll give the premier credit. Um, she sat down with me and listened to my ideas and incorporated a lot of our, our ideas into the legislation. I had some great meetings with Andrew Horvath and Patrick Brown. Um, and by the end of the process, as, we, as the process worked its way forward, it turned out that we didn't all agree on everything. Right. But on some of the core elements that all four parties agreed. Right. So one which is things, amazing. Which is totally amazing. Doesn't happen very often. Yeah. And so one of the things I suggest was, why don't we do a news conference where all four of us like come out and say, hey, here's where we agree. And this is like a really important statement to the people of Ontario that we can do politics differently. And I couldn't get any of them to do that because everyone wanted to try to figure out how they could maneuver to make the other one look bad uh, and make them look good. And in some and in some cases in politics, like that should happen and sure. it does happen. Okay, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are times when it when it shouldn't happen. Right. And so I just feel like, um, you know, when you talk about integrity, you know, let's talk about like being honest with people. Let's talk about you know having values that we bring to the table that um, really are about putting service above self, putting the people of Ontario above your own self interest. Awesome. And. That doesn't happen enough in politics, unfortunately. You it's know, starting to happen more in business, though, because I think businesses are really starting to recognize that you know the zero sum game doesn't always um, work for to maximize benefits for everyone. It's, it's way more fun to bake a bigger pie than eat more pie. Absolutely. Yeah, and and we've seen that all the time. Like I'm in a group with three. There's three competitors, myself and two others, and we we meet up. And share ideas and best practices yeah. and challenges. I did and, that with my competitors when I was in business too. Yeah, it like, makes so much sense, and it's awesome. Yeah. And, it, and it really creates a hey, you're you're, you're oh you're like to your point oh you're really good at this, wonderful because we have a bit of a deficiency. We'd love to bring you in on a project. And, yeah, and it really creates a bigger pie. It Absolutely. really actually built a bigger pie. So I, I love that idea of bringing that into uh, a public eye for, mm-hmm. for politics, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. Um, so if if you were to say, I mean, you got a platform right now a little bit. You got sure. one, if you if there's one thing you want to tell people, there, there's an election happening, right? Like you there want, is. That's you right. want to give a shout out on an idea or something you want to say? Yeah. So you know, I think for me, the biggest message I'm trying to deliver to people right now is that at this particular moment in time, we need to do politics differently. I think people are starting to get incredible. I mean, I don't I don't want to get too partisan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, other I, for, I appreciate other, that. Other forums, I will get very partisan. I have all sorts of parties. That's right. That's right. So I don't, I don't, so wanna, I don't want to do that in thank this you. setting. Great. But I think, you know, it's pretty obvious there's a lot of turmoil in Ontario politics right now. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. I'd say that's so. an understatement, right? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and as so, a business owner, none of it's impacted me at all. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but so I think there's a lot of people sort of just looking at like all of like you know, some of the, um, I hate to use the word scandals, but just some of the scandals that have happened at Queen's Park right. and have happened within certain parties. And I think it's sort of turning people off of politics. Like, it's just like, this is a mess. And so I'm really trying to tell people, like, don't be, don't disengage. Just don't become too cynical. Well, and like, politics in- can be done differently. And I think politics, if it's done based on honesty, integrity, and policies that put people first, ahead of your own political self-interest, yeah. ahead of your own partisan self-interest, ahead of your own personal ambition, that, um, you know, politics can work right. to, to, to make our communities better, to make our province better, to make our country better. Big and time. so I think that's an, I think that to me is the core issue that so stay with are us. confronting right now. Stay you with, know? Well, because apathy with, and indifference absolutely. is the worst. That is the worst. Anger at least you got people invested. At least you could channel that anger. Yeah, well, yeah, and exactly. they're invested. If they're angry, then they're invested. But if if people are apathetic and, and yeah. indifferent, then well, we're really yeah. kind of hooped, and it really does. Really, then it threatens democracy. That's what I mean. It and then really it threatens does. the foundation of our society. Yeah. And so you know, I tell people all the time, it's like, um, you know, you may not agree with me, but I hope you respect me for being honest with you, for having integrity, for putting forward, you know, my vision of and policies that I think will make Ontario a better place. And, I know in the last election I was knocking on doors in the south end of Guelph and I knocked, I, there was a person sitting on his porch and I won't get it, go too long into this story. But, yeah, no, it's okay. We got a couple he, he disagreed with me on some policies. Sure. And I said to him, I said, I really respect your opinion. And I said, but, you know, I want to just, I want to be honest with you about why I support all day two-way go service and how I would pay for it. Right. And 
you know, almost every party is saying they support all day two way ghost servers, but not everyone is being honest with you about how they would pay for it. Right. And I was very specific. Yeah, it all has got to come from somewhere. Yeah, it's not magic money fairy dust, right? <laughs> and I was very specific about how I would pay for it. He disagreed with it. And I yeah. said, that's fine. You that's, know, cool. That's, that's cool. This is a conversation. This, yeah. is what, this is what public life should be about, right? Absolutely. So I knocked on all the doors in the cul de sac and I had finished the last door and I was getting ready to walk off. And the gentleman called me over. He's like, come back here, green guy. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> here, go. here we go. He's going to give me an earful, you know? And no, he actually said, I want to sign and I'm going to vote for you. And I'm like, really? And I said, well, well why? And because I thought you disagreed with me. And he's like, oh, I still disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, still don't, I still don't I don't agree with the way you want to pay for transit. But he's like, you know what? I thought about it. And you're right. Like, you're the only person who's had the courage to stand on my porch and be honest with me about how you would pay for something. Way to go, man. And if we don't, if we don't elect honest politicians, we'll never have honesty in politics. And he's like, so I still disagree with you. Yeah. But I'm going to vote for you anyway. And awesome. I just thought that, like, just, like, Boom. touched my heart, eh? You know? I'm like, okay. We need more of that in politics. I gotta go We're start knocking on more doors. Yeah, 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 I gotta go knock on more doors. Oh, I've knocked on. I've heard knocked on more doors in Guelph than maybe anybody has. I bet. <laughs> so, um, That's yeah. That's really cool. So, but it's moments like that that give me a lot of hope. Awesome. So, um, I, I end uh, I'm in a car typically with this last question around, uh, you know, if you could go back to yourself, you know, when you started this journey of uh, entrepreneurship and leadership. Mm-hmm. And tell yourself something then that you know now. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would it? What would it be? Yeah. So I think one of the things I learned the hard way as an entrepreneur, and I've tried to correct this mistake as a political leader, is um, is just knowing what, being aware of how much I just don't know. So when I was in my twenties and I started my first business, I thought I could take on the world and I knew yeah. how to do everything, and right. nobody was going to tell me how to do things, and and uh, and. I made so many mistakes just by being almost overconfident to some extent. I mean, you need some overconfidence too to be an entrepreneur. Sure. You kind of have to, you have to like do the impossible, you have to make the impossible possible as an entrepreneur. But you know what? I, the one thing I learned was, um, there's so much you have to learn from other people and everybody has something to contribute. And so for me, just, you know, having an open mind and listening to lots of different ideas and lots of different opinions and um, that collective wisdom of the community is generally when you make the best decisions. That's cool. And so I've really tried to apply that in politics that, uh, you know what, I deeply, deeply believe in listening to people and hearing what the community has to say and then the collective wisdom of the community helps guide, um, you know, what what I'm going to do. And, and for me, then, you know, as long as I stay true to my values and who I am, um, you know, I can admit that I don't know everything. <laughs> yeah, I don't know a lot of things, right? Um, and, and and then Guelph in particular is such an incredible community. Like, there, it's just such a caring really community. Lucky. And we, we're so lucky in Guelph. And so, you know, for me, uh, you know, the collective wisdom of the community to help have that guide the decisions I make are really important. Cool. Yeah, it's really interesting you end this ride with that note um, because that's like the whole purpose of this platform of I'm a okay. car. Okay. Yeah, you know, there were so many people. I was in a group. We were trying to figure out um, how to bring speakers into, into Guelph for mm-hmm. an event that we put on. Um, and we were thinking about, you know, all these people from Toronto and from the States. Right. And, and, we you know, we were like, hold on a second. You know what? Why don't we look local? Absolutely. There are some really cool success stories and there's some really mm-hmm. cool wisdom all around us. And we ended up putting together a roster of epic speakers, so much so that we did it the same week of LeaderCast last year. I'm not sure okay, if anybody's heard, great. Of, yep. heard of LeaderCast, but we did it the week after of, of LeaderCast last year. And we got so much feedback that that event was better than LeaderCast, or as wow. good as LeaderCast. Yeah. And we're talking about global, best practice, $100,000 speakers. Yeah. And then in our room, a whole bunch of people that volunteered to share their stories. And I think there's a lot of... Uh, beauty in that idea of yeah. taking in a whole bunch of perspectives and then filtering it through our own values to make great decisions. And so I, from that perspective, yeah. I hope people watch a whole bunch of these or, or listen to them. Cause yeah. I know there's, there's going to be long, you know, this yeah, one's half an hour. Yeah. But if you're driving around, you can just put on YouTube and then just you know, don't look yeah. at your phone and, and listen right. to them. Yeah, I'm exactly. Pr- I'm so stoked that you got a chance to well, come. Rob, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. And one of the things I, I want to do, if I could just close really quick is yeah, of course. as Guelph's MPP, one of the things I really want to do is something I'm already doing, but I think I can do on a bigger scale is just organize community conversations. And uh, in a sense, do what you're 
describing is cool. to give a forum for people in Guelph to talk about their ideas and their vision and their dreams awesome. and how we as a community and as a province can realize those dreams and I think I think creating forums like this forum and other forums for those kind of conversations to happen is really important awesome dude so keep up the good work thank you thank you for doing this absolutely my pleasure anytime okay. see, see you guys bye